It's good to be back in the house of the Lord this morning. We have you turn your Bibles to the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 3. The The, the study this morning is concerning Paul as he wrote to the church at Corinthians. I think he was in Ephesus when he wrote this. And uh, he writes about uh, carnal-minded. And we want to study just a little bit this morning about this word carnal and how that it affects people and how what it really means. So in chapter 3, verse 1, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual. And I think what he's talking about, one thing, he wasn't there. And another thing, too, uh, that he knew that they weren't saved. Because he says, But as unto carnal or fleshly concerned minds, even as unto babes in Christ. And we, we want to... Uh, show you Paul's trying to get their attention by calling them babes. Uh -huh. And uh, they'd been a church for a while and uh, uh, they thought they were in pretty good shape, but they weren't as good a shape as they thought they were. And one thing in particular that they uh, would not grasp, of course they were still thinking back and forth with the law, but also that Jesus Christ had not come and died and was resurrected. They did not accept that. And so Paul, here he's writing this letter to them. He says here in verse 2, I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto you were not able to bury it, neither yet now are you able. And so he uses this, this term here to try to get their attention. And of course, we know that uh, babes have, uh, they, they live on, on milk uh, to a certain age, but he says also with milk and not with meat. And the meat, the meat uh, is, is, uh, is the word, but you know, I, I got to thinking about this as I was reading this, the meat part uh, used to when, when babies were, were uh, born and for the first six to eight months, they couldn't eat anything solid like it just break off the breast. But I've seen the mothers chew it up mm -hmm. and then give it to them mm -hmm. and make it for that they could uh, digest it. And I, I, I thought with, with that, Paul is sending this letter to them and trying to uh, get this meat tenderized enough that they can accept it because they're on milk mm -hmm. and they haven't received any any good teachings about uh, what's going on. So he says here, I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For here, hitherto, or before, you were not able to bear it, neither yet are now are you able. And so he had understood from other, uh, evidently from other people that had came there or had told him about it, that they still were in a carnal mind and this carnal mind is a is a fleshly mind, and and we have we have this with saved people. We have this warfare mm -hmm. that's going on between the spirit and with the body, and you have to overcome this uh, carnal mind, or this 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 mind that is uh, trying to direct the flesh to overpower the spirit. Mm -hmm. And so this is what was going on with them there. And so he says uh, here in verse verse three, ye are not, ye are yet carnal for whereas there is among you envy and strife and division. Are ye not carnal and walk as men? Mm -hmm. So here, he, here he's, he's just putting it down to him like it is. And, uh, wanting to, to uh, tell them about these things. Now, I want to, uh, I want to turn, if you would, to, to the book of Romans and read just a little bit to you about Paul's condition. And 
and Romans 14. I can find it real easy. Should be in the Bible. Romans 14. We for we know that the law is spiritual. And this is what Paul is trying to convince them of. But I am, I am, he's considering himself, I am carnal, sold under sin. And so what he's, he's, he's saying is that he's still having a warfare with this same problem. And he had it till he died, I'm, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. Mm -hmm. So he is saying, spiritually, I want to do what is spiritual, but I don't. And I, I wind up doing this carnal line, and I hate it. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's the that's the condition of Christians this morning, and they still have this carnal mind. They still have this flesh to contend with, but they need to. Uh, pray, they need to study God's Word, they need to continue going to church, and they need to, to feast upon God's Word and and understand what is going on really in your mind because this old body is going to die one day mm -hmm. and it's not going to be anymore. It's going to rot in the ground. Now there's going to be a sprout come out of that which is a glorified body. Mm -hmm. But now we see that when when this comes about, that spirit won't have that warfare going on with it anymore because it will have a perfect temple to live in, the body or the risen body. And so there won't be any more uh, of this uh, spirit, that carnal spirit. But he says, for that, uh, for that which I do, I allow not. Mm -hmm. And so he's, he's fighting it. He's got a warfare going on. So now listen down in the... Now, in verse 17, uh, 16, if then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. And of course, the law was given to Moses, and we know this, but the law was works for salvation. And Paul understood through the death of Jesus Christ that it was by grace through faith. Amen. So he's saying here, if then I do that which I would not, I consent or I agree unto the law that it is good. And Paul said, and, and our scripture says there's none, there's nothing good about the law. Uh, and so he says, 17, now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Mm -hmm. And still, all in all, Paul did not say, that's my excuse. Because he says, I do it, I do it. But he says, I understand the sin that dwelleth in me, for I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing, for to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. And Amen. so this morning, I, you know, this should, this should increase our desire to serve the Lord. This should make us understand a lot of mornings when we get up on Sunday morning when we go to church that the devil makes you uh, aggravate you, you. You do all these things and, and you get upset. That's what he wants. Right. And so he's always present to do this. And, 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 and this flesh, you try, you try to do something for God. You try to do something that's you know that's right. And I'll give you an example is your tithe. You, t you, 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 you lay out so much money for your tithe. First thing happens is the devil says, well, hey, you don't owe that much or you need that for something else. It's, he's always, he's always at you with this. And so he says in verse 18, I, for I know that in me that is in my flesh well, no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. For the good that I would, I do, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. So right. Paul, Paul is he's he's preaching it, he's teaching it, he's writing to these people uh, uh, and telling them about him, and he's not putting on no flattery about himself, and he's not saying, "Hey, I don't sin," and all this like. So many people uh, today 
think that uh, they don't sin. Uh, but mm -hmm. listen, Paul said he sinned, and if he would, he spoke to God about uh, when he was saved. So we know that this is what happened to him. So he says uh, in verse 20, Now if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. So this mm -hmm. morning, you can take it to the bank. There's sin in your body. There's sin in my body. It's mm -hmm. nature. It's it was it was that way when Adam did what he did, and it was put in there. And every child that's born inherits that. Amen. It's that sin, that little seed that's in her. And listen, the devil desires to uh, encourage that little seed to grow and to take power over the body. Amen. And so. That's our problem this morning with serving the Lord. Uh, we have the devil to contend with, and so it gets to be it gets to be sometimes a, a, a burden to us. And listen, we have to be so careful about uh, doing something, and he slips up on us and and makes us do these things. But anyway, we have a Father, we have a Savior, Jesus Christ, Amen. that took our place. And we can go to him and we can ask him to forgive us of our sins. And he's willing to forgive us. So here again, now if uh, in verse 21, I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man, the, the spirit. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind Amen. and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is my is in my members. And he, he says this, and, and I, 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 I think about it so many times. Oh, wretched man, oh, mm -hmm. wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death mm -hmm. and it is it is the body of death and the only way you can get rid of it is to die that's it i thank god through jesus christ our lord so then with the mind i myself serve the law of god but with the flesh the law of sin now look over if you would right as we're studying here in 8 uh 8 13 uh i'm gonna read just a little bit more to you in 8 Chapter 8, 13, 13 verse. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. Mm -hmm. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify or kill the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Mm -hmm. And so our, our enemy is our flesh. And if we get a little scratch or a, a hurt or something like that, we want to get fixed. But the thing of it is, it's our enemy. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and it... It's, it's made that way and it's just like it's just like uh, uh, anything that's made for a, 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 a shovel to shovel it's made for to dig dirt and that's all it's good for and our our spirit our sin our flesh is made to interfere with our spirit amen and so uh, it's 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 a it's a it's a close thing here this morning listen for as many as are led by the Spirit, verse 14, of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage, again, of the worry uh, uh, sin, to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry out my Father. So he's telling them this thing about their, uh, their condition. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So Amen. Here, the Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit. And so our spirit is not alone when, when, the, when the old flesh decides it wants to, uh, uh, to, to aggravate it and to uh, be contrary and try to cause it to sin. So back in our lesson now in chapter 3 and verse uh, all after he's telling them about uh, feeding them with milk. Uh, he says in verse 3, For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envy and strife and division, and you are not carnal. 
and walketh in. I done read it. For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? These mm -hmm. men that were saying they were of Paul and of Apollos, they were carnal minded. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and, and and Paul uh, did not want to uh, put any uh, uh, favor on, on Apollos or on, on himself either because he says, for one, Paul once says, and, and of course, Paul and I'm of Apollos, you are carnal. Mm -hmm. And so they were, they, were, they were in a condition where they didn't know what they were doing. When in verse 5, who then is Paul and who is Apollos, but ministers by whom you believe, Amen. even as the Lord gave to every man. So they were putting their trust in the wrong way. They, they weren't using him as a belief, but they were, they were trusting in him. He said, I, well, one said, I am of Paul. And, and so here again, notice in verse 6, I have planted Apollos water, but God gave the increase. Amen. Now this is what Paul is, is telling them about this when they claim for one said, I'm this, now I'm that. But he says, I have uh, uh, I have planted Apollos water, but God gave the increase. So then, neither is he that planteth anything, neither is he that watereth, but God giveth the increase. Amen. That's his. That's his point to these these people here that uh, that are uh, carnally minded. He's wanting to give them the right right directions and so he he says here now he that planteth it and he that water are one and every man shall revive his own reward according to his own lot so here he's he's telling them god give the increase he's telling them here he that now he that planteth and he that waters are one and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor so Amen. uh this is this is a promise to us this morning uh, from God. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry or workers. Ye are God's building, mm -hmm. according to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder. I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth their own. But let every man take heed how he buildeth their own. Amen. And that's, that is a very good a very good point. Be careful. Of course, these people here are building on Apollos and, and on Paul. But be careful how that, and I know this morning that there are so many people uh, that's the biggest church in the world. And they're dependent upon the Pope. They mm -hmm. depend upon him uh, to pray for them, to forgive them of their sins, uh, even to the point when they die and they go to purgatory, he offers his uh, uh, prayers and uh, delivers them. Mm. And and so this is this is one of some of the things that's going on in the world today. And, and you can imagine why that uh, God is so uh, aggravated with the world, or so upset with the world, and he and he shakes them every once in a while, and they're getting a shaking right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, he wants us to. I'll open our eyes and see what's going on. Now, in verse 11, we want to see something here. For other foundations can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. The master builder. Now, if any man build upon the fountain of this foundation, gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, stubble, Every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire. Amen. And the fire shall try every man's works of what sort it is. So uh, I, I don't, uh, I don't, I mean, I know that they're made by, tried by fire and that's the, that's the way that a true trial is made. So if any man's works abide, he hath built, he hath built their own, he shall receive an award. Mm -hmm. So if any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved as so of the fort. Want to uh, turn just a minute now to the book of Galatians and uh, 
we want to read just a little bit there in five. If I can get Galatians five. And I got one down here. Galatians five. Yeah. And I hope you I hope some of this will help you. Now he says here in verse one, stand fast or free from the law. He's talking about the law. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty and free from the law. That's the liberty that we have through Jesus Christ for dying for our, our sins. Cry, uh, for with Christ has made us free, he's free from the law. And he, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Amen. Now notice, I want, I, want, I want to show you something here this morning. People, people will take this right here and uh, they'll, they'll use it for security of the believer and then they'll use it to, if you fall from security of the believer you can, uh, you can get it back. And, and this thing here, it, it, it's, that, don't, that ain't what it's talking about. Because he says, Behold, I call say unto you that if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. That's the law. Amen. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. And so uh, the, 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 I, I'm assuming, I, and I never had, I studied the Jewish laws and all this, but the Jew, they still practice circumcision. And they do it because they keep the law. Or, and they try to keep the law. And they don't believe that Jesus Christ has ever come. Amen. And so you can see what a a predicament they are in, but here he says, and, and Christ has become no effect unto you in verse 4. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, you have fallen from grace. For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Amen. So that makes it clear to, it should make it clear to everybody that the keeping of the law is not, not like it used to be with Moses and them because of Jesus Christ and what he did for us because this morning, Jesus knew that the people could not keep the law and there had to be an atonement for that law because mm -hmm. it was, it was perfect uh, in, in that it, it was, uh, God made it, mm -hmm. and and Jesus Christ understood this, and he, of course, he's been with God through eternity, and he's, and but he knew that he, there had to be something made, and so that would atone for all of the sins that the people make under the law, and of course, the old law was that they make they give sacrifices and c cover their sins. But it wouldn't forgive because what they would do was they those sins would just be rolled back and rolled back and rolled back until Jesus Christ came. Mm -hmm. There's never been no sin forgiven by the law, but it was just a holding area until Jesus Christ came and kept the law. And the law then was kept and, and all of those sins were then forgiven through Jesus Christ because Amen. of that illness. And so it's, it's wonderful to understand how that Jesus did this and, and, and so many people don't understand this. They, they just can't, you can't tell them this. And so uh, here in verse uh, seven, I think it is, ye did run well. Who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? This persuasion cometh not of him that called you. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. He Amen. says, now here, this persuasion cometh not of him that calls you. So the, the, the thing of it is here, he's talking about the Holy Spirit calling, or, and he's saying the persuasion cometh not to, of him that called you. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. I have confidence in you through the Lord that you will be none otherwise minded, but he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment whosoever he be. And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Right. 
then is the offense of the cross cease. So Paul is trying to convince these people here at Colossians to, uh, to uh, this thing, but he says, verse 12, I would they were even cut off with which trouble you. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty through grace. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. So he says, don't let this flesh hinder you. Don't, don't, don't come, don't let it get the best of you. But he mm -hmm. says here, uh, here he says, only use not liberty for an occasion. He's saying, only don't, you, you're saved by grace. Mm -hmm. But don't don't fly back there sometimes and say, well, I'm, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that because the law said it. And so that's what he's, he's talking about. For In verse 14, for all the law is fulfilled in one, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. We'll yeah, get back on our lesson just a few more minutes here and read just a little bit more. And I, I'm going to close up here. I wanted to see this about the Yule Care. I can find it now. And see. Uh, okay. In verse, I think it's in verse 11 where I left off at. Uh, 10. According, according to the grace of God which is given unto me, as a mad, wise master, though I have laid the foundation and another build a throne, but let every man take heed how he build a throne and under it. For other foundations can no man lay than that he is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, if any man build upon the foundation gold, silver, and precious stones, wood, hay, and stones, every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by far, and the far shall try every man's works out. If any man's works abide, which he hath built her own, he shall receive an award. If Amen. any man's works shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. I done read these things, but I, I wanted to uh, get back to where it was at. In, in verse 16, make that word that know ye not that ye are of the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. And so many people this morning does not understand this verse. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God. And listen, the temple uh, is inside of this old, uh, and this old fleshly body is the one that's protecting the spirit. But he says, know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. And so this morning, we have the spirit of uh, the Holy Spirit dwelling in this temple this morning. And so we need to protect, we need to protect this building uh, and, 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 and keep it as clean as we can. So uh, if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's the problem. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seem to be wise in this world, <coughs> let him become a fool, that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God, for it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are in vain. Let there no... Let Therefore, let no man glory in man, for all things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world, or life or death, or things present or things to come. All are yours, and ye are Christ and Christ God. I want to read one other scripture here over in Proverbs, uh, right there, Proverbs 3, concerning this right here. Proverbs 3 and I think it's 1. Yeah. My son, forget not my law, but let thy heart keep my commandments. Amen. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. 
Let mercy or loving kindness and truth forsake thee not. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. Amen. So shall thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not up, up to thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Amen. And it shall be healthy to thy navel and the marrow and to thy bones. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thy comforts. And that is the lesson for today. I hope that uh, you enjoy the reading. I uh, didn't make no whole lot of comments, but I just wanted to read some of this, and I hope that I hope that, that I, I pray that the Lord will use it for reminding you of some of the things that uh, we read here this morning, and maybe it'll be a, a blessing to you. So that, thank you for listening to us, and uh, uh, pray for Jared that he'll be back next Sunday. He continue teaching Sunday school. Thank y'all. Thank you.